Welcome back in, Trey Lowell here with Lowell Productions. In front of me, I have the Movo WMX20 wireless lavalier set. Now, small disclaimer, the guys over at Movo did send this to me, but they wanted to hear what I had to say about their wireless setup. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around as we do a full review coming up next. All right, so to get things started off, we have currently already been rolling with that WMX20 lavalier audio. Now, we also are going to be recording directly into the Zoom H4. For those that you can kind of see, I apologize, I can't completely turn it around. We're using an XLR input that's included with the wireless lavalier and receiver. And the real reason that we're doing this is with it being more of their prosumer level uh, wireless setup, I wanted to use it in a, what I would consider more prosumer level setup. Now recording into the zoom box is going to give me a little bit more of an advantage in regards to, we're gonna have that XLR input coming out of that wireless setup. Now, we also have the wireless setup running in. I've got it just here on my pocket, not really trying to hide it that much, but more giving you guys the versatility of something like this. And we'll go through some of the things that are included quickly with this setup. Obviously, you're gonna have both the transmitter and the receiver. You're gonna have a little XLR input that's included that will go into the receiver. You're also gonna have an actual mic that is included with a little wind muff. We're also going to have this little carrying case which I find is gonna come in handy for those that are really looking to kind of protect their wireless setup. Also, you're gonna have your traditional 3.5 millimeter that would go into a camera or maybe even other some sort of setup. And then you're also gonna have a hot shoe little mount. As far as audio is sounding, you guys comment in the comment section below. How are we sounding so far in regards to this current setup? As far as the volume goes, we're currently recording at a volume of 26 with the Movo Audio. I found that I pretty much had to go about 20 and above, especially going into the Zoom box, just to get what I would consider like levels that were like negative six and below. Of course, I can go all the way up to 30 with their volume, and I found that that was actually ended up peaking. So just for a little reference point, 20 to 30 is where I think most people are going to be setting their volume. And that's simply by holding down both the negative and plus, hitting set, and then you now have your volume settings. And you can hit set again, and then that'll walk you through your channels on and off channel A and channel B. Now, I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna actually butcher the audio currently, but holding down that negative and that plus is going to then take you into the settings with both the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, so this is actually going to be the first time that we are outside with the Movo WMX20 wireless setup. Now, as we did earlier today, we were going into the Zoom H4, which was more of that prosumer level, like I had mentioned, so now we're entering into what I think a lot of you guys are gonna be using, and that's your particular DSLR or mirrorless camera. Now we're using the Panasonic GH5, going directly into that headphone jack, recording at roughly negative six dB into camera. I'm actually gonna drop that down to negative eight because it's sounding pretty solid and actually the audio levels are reading out pretty clear. We're recording at a volume of 27 on the actual receiver. And in regards to where the placement of the mic's gonna be, it's right here on my jacket. And now I think the only other thing that I wanna do is I've got this massive, all these steps here, and I wanna see how far I can go down there and possibly still get some signal. So let's do that for you guys. What we're actually gonna do is I'm going to vlog on the Onreal, but we're gonna use the Panasonic GH5 audio. And uh, yeah, that way we can really get an understanding of, you guys can see the camera is way up there. And I'm pretty confident at this point it should still be rolling pretty well. You got the camera way up here and we're just seeing, are we still getting audio is really gonna be the question. Because at this point, pretty good distance in regards to how far away we are from the camera. How you doing? So camera is all the way up there, still got the wireless transmitter on, really just wanna see, it's gonna probably be hard for you guys to see me down here, but are we still getting some good solid audio? So if it's still recording, that's gonna be pretty awesome. There you guys go. I mean, we are way, if the camera is all the way up there, 
and we're down here. So if it's, if it's still going good for you WMX20, especially at 150 bucks. If we're going back up those stairs, uh, very interested to see how did it perform in regards to that distance. Okay, we have officially arrived. So while we're inside, let's run through some quick specs in regards to the Movo WMX20 wireless setup. It's basically just a dual channel wireless receiver, both giving you an A and B channel. You have both the selectability of stereo and mono mode recording. You're gonna have a mic in and a line out. Selectable mute function, that's gonna be a huge benefit in regards to, let's say you're on the fly and you just need to quickly mute the audio, you're gonna have that option. In regards to monitoring your audio, of course you can use your camera or you could use the zoom box, but in their case, they also give you the option of being able to monitor it through the receiver end of things. So if you had headphones, go ahead and just plug them in and you're gonna be able to listen to that audio on the fly. So now that we've covered the specs, we've gotten an opportunity to take it not only outside, but inside to do an audio test for you guys. I just wanted to give you my overall thoughts, pros and cons of this particular $150 unit. Now, if that's your budget, I think this is gonna be a pretty viable option for you. In regards to audio going directly into the Panasonic GH5, I found the audio was pretty solid. I'm going to say there was a little bit of user error in regards to my part when we were outside. Sometimes when my head would move from side to side and regarding lavalier mics, you could see that the audio was peaking. Now inside, I have a little bit more flexibility with the zoom box. So in regards to control, I did find that the audio was a little bit better through that XLR input going into the zoom box, which was definitely expected or I would knew was gonna probably be the result, but it was also nice to be able to compare the two. So overall thoughts, if it's going into a mirrorless or a DSLR camera, Let's just go ahead and make sure that we start at zero or below, and if anything, make our way up in regards to those audio levels. Now, in regards to things that I really like as well, as for the packaging and all the accessories that it comes with, it's nice because it really means you can use this with your camera or you're gonna be able to use it with a recorder device. Also, the case is gonna come in handy. Overall, yeah, I liked it, and I think I'll find myself using it. Um, on a pro level, I am kind of comparing this to the My Stenhauser uh, G3s, which are older microphone, but are gonna be roughly $700. Now, I would just say, in regards to functionality, 700 versus 150, this is pretty usable, and it's definitely, for most people, going to satisfy that audio need. Now, I would just say, what you're going to have to do is just play around with mic placement. You're just gonna to have to get comfortable with this particular unit, and that way you can take full advantage of it. This is roughly the first or second time I've actually used it. So you, my comfortability level is just going to get more and more useful or used to this particular unit in time. Now, cons. Really only I found one, uh, yeah, I'd just say one, and that is the actual unit itself, no, two, two. The unit itself, when I first grabbed it, it just feels really plasticky which let me be the first one to tell you. If the unit functions, I don't really care. It was just when I first grabbed it, it was super lightweight. Now it didn't have batteries in it, which you gotta take in consideration, but it just felt very lightweight. And uh, so it's just something to keep in mind in regards to when you buy this unit. I've dropped it a few times. It's fallen out of my bag and it's still, you know, rocking and rolling, but I just want you guys to understand that was one of the cons. And then con number two really is just going to be size. Um, but then again, like I mentioned earlier, it fits in your pocket. You can clip it to the side of your pockets. I mean, it's pretty thin overall. It's just, if I were going to be picky, that would be my second con. So overall, at $150 at its price point, I think this is a unit or a setup that a lot of you guys are gonna be able to plug and play and really go to town if you're going to be using a mirrorless DSLR or a recording unit. So shout out to the guys over at Movo for sending me the WMX20 lavalier unit. As always, I love their products and they're fun and very reasonably priced to be implementing into my video production workflow. So hey guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content I keep creating on this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.